Hi, this is The Philosophical Angle, defining concepts in current media. I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available online, free for viewing, at www.philosophypublishing.com. They are also available free upon request as an attachment to an email which is posted at the philosophypublishing.com website. Along with me are our panelists, Mark Brennan, professor at the Stern School of Business, New York University. He is also the American editor of the Quarterly Review of London, England, established 1809. Rick Samuelson graduated from Yale has an MBA from Wharton and an MA from Tufts. He is also retired head of securities at UBS Japan. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature of the concepts being used in current media and compare the essence of the concept with the usage and circumstances in which the term is being used. The format of the philosophical angle is that your host will bring forth an opening statement on the nature of the concept for your consideration and our distinguished panel will react with, it, with their criticisms, questions, and their own definitions. <clears throat> this week, uh, we're going to slightly change the format and amidst our purpose to define concepts in current media, there is a compelling need to additionally analyze the nature of the stock market as it is a vast importance to Americans as much of our future and retirement plans are dependent upon its direction. As such, we at the Philosophical Angle will once a month attempt to analyze the political and economic parameters that surround it that will allow us to discuss the potential direction. Your host is also uh, the editor of The Right Report, which addresses this issue once a month. The Right Report is available free for viewing at www.stock-market-direction.net. It is also available as an email attachment upon request at the email noted at this website at no charge for, for the audience. The methodology behind the right report is to compile the corporate, business, economic, and political news snippets that have a directional bias inherent within the headlines within the Wall Street Journal on a monthly basis, which the right report uses to generate indexes. These news index indexes are used as factors for prognostication of, of market direction with a risk analysis for investors' considerations. And now, to its current situation, a summary of the report's indices. The right report has noted in the last month of October that the, uh, f that the profit, corporate profit snippets have gone to a 61% positive and 39% negative. These snippets are taken from the Wall Street Journal. And let's go to the board here. Corporate profit snippets, 61% pro positive, 39% negative. And historically, over the last two years, this is, uh, this is approximately where the corporate profit situation has been. Sometimes it has actually gone into the 70% range, but nevertheless, this is a pretty good score. However, the general business and economic snippets, the positive uh, in the month of October was only 26%. The negative was 74% in the total uh, headline activity of the snippets. Also, uh, in a, showing a, a downward uh, spir spiral is the M&A activity snippets, down to 17. 
The overall investment strategy uh, put out by the Wright Report uh, is down from the 70% range into the mid-60s at 63.9. Not bad. However, this general business and economic snippets have uh, really gone down in the last two months. In September and in October, it has not fared very well. Part of this problem is the uh, uh, significant portion of these uh, headlines with a negative bias are because of the European situation, particularly the Greek default situation. Also, the right, uh, report makes uh, judgment as to the direction of gold and the direction of oil and the U.S. dollar index. Because of worldwide inflation, and it counts the snippets also involved with uh, inflation, the oil, uh, the, uh, the, the, gold, uh, ha we, the gold snippets have increased, and we feel that worldwide inflation is under attack, and governments are printing money throughout the world, and so gold has, nothing, has nowhere to go except up. The U.S. dollar, however, because of the European crisis, has one way uh, it is dragging it down because of uh, inflation of the U.S. dollar. However, there's a flight to safety in the midst of the European crisis. So there's a parameter dragging it up and a parameter dragging it down. So we, don't, we make no call as to a direction for the U.S. dollar index. <clears throat> So the, let's go back to our board. So today, uh, with the, greed, the Greece exposure of, its, uh, of, the, of the news uh, from uh, of the possible default, we see that there are not only uh, Greece, but there are also potentially other countries. So Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, known as the pigs, all from southern Europe. And the countries uh, looking to help to bail them out are all also from Northern Europe. The reason for the, uh, the, the, uh, for the problem is that in Greece and in the other potential uh, defaulters, the government uh, welfare states are overspending. And now they can't pay their bills. This is going to produce a bond default unless the other governments come in and help. And therefore, the northern gov governments are now, uh, 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 may possibly help the, uh, uh, the, southern European, the southern European countries from their overspending. And now, uh, if they do or even if they don't, what kind of effect will that happen, will that have on the U.S. economy? So we're here to discuss that today. And so let's get to it. Uh, Rick, I'd like to start with you. Do you have any general comments about the, uh, the Greek default and its possibility, possible influence on the U.S. stock market? Well, I, I'm reading the, you know, the, the, the press uh, on this matter. Um, I, I, there's certainly a large uh, group of opinion makers who think the only solution is to further integrate fiscal policy across Europe uh, along more or less German lines. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical of that, actually. Uh, I, I don't see how, uh, I, I hate to call Greece a marginal country, but I think it's two or three percent of the uh, Euro European GDP, so it's, it's really very, very tiny. It's you know, kind of a Rhode Island-sized economy relative to the, the major economies in Europe. I, I, don't, I don't really see what the danger is in allowing Greece to return to the drachma and just toss him out of the uh, Euro Union and allow the currency to depreciate and you know, the economy to adjust. Uh, it'll, it'll be painful, no doubt about that. The Greeks won't like it. but. You know, the, the, the notion that uh, Greece can be harmonized with the German economy in terms of fiscal policy in any reasonable frame of 
time frame, I think is is a little bit uh, overly optimistic. And it's clear that you know the European banks are going to have to take haircuts. And I know 50% haircuts are being talked about. Uh, and sorry, but that's that's life. Um, but I, 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 as opposed to trying to force fiscal integration, which will certainly won't happen soon enough, I think it's easier for um, certain countries to drop the euro and and return to their original currencies, and Greece would be one of them. Mark, uh, how do you respond? I would agree. I think that's what should happen, but I don't think it will happen for two reasons. First of all, once Germany dropped, uh, once if Greece were to go back to the drachma, now Germany has got a country that has to compete against in the euro market uh, for with with exports. And right now, uh, Greece is not producing anything that Germany would compete against. But over time, Greece, then Portugal, then Ireland, then whoever else, Italy. As they start to drop out, now Germany has competitors. So Germany will do whatever and it's whatever it can to keep these guys in so they don't have to compete against them. But more importantly, the European banks are going to take the haircuts. It's harder to find a bigger group of rent seekers than large corporate commercial banks. They will do everything in their power to uh, exploit the social and political environment to make sure that nothing happens that's going to hurt them too much, the way we saw the American banks on their knees begging for bailouts in 2008. Well, I think that's kind of natural for them to, to be begging for help. Um, I think... Yeah, uh, you know, this, this rent-seeking behavior has gotten us into so much trouble that uh, I, can, I can understand why people are, you know, sitting under tarps in Zuccotti Park. Okay, but the rent-seeking behavior, are, are you referring to uh, the American uh, side or the European or both sides? The banks. All the banks on both sides of the ocean. Okay. And, uh, could you explain that statement, rent-seeking? Sure. There's two ways you can make money. You can be uh, profit-seeking, which is where you add value to a product and sell it in the market and people are willing to pay for it. Or you can be a rent-seeker, which is where you manipulate the social and, and political environment to gain favor from the government or monopoly power to force people to buy your product or to extract money from wealth producing sectors of society. And that's what the banks have largely been doing since 08. Sounds like actually a, um, a prescription for government behavior also. Wouldn't you do not say that? Uh, well, you manipulate, rent seeker manipulates the government. The government, the government steals money from taxpayers. Uh, it, it, you know, if, if you doubt that for one second, stop paying your taxes and men will come to your house with guns and they will kill you if you don't uh, submit to their wishes. So the government just steals. Uh, rent seekers manipulate the government and, and, and the political uh, apparatus towards their advantage. Sounds like rent seekers, in other words, for lobbyists. It's well, rent seekers use lobbyists. Uh, you know, somebody. I used to wonder, gee, why does Time Warner, why is Time Warner the only cable company that provides cable TV in Manhattan? Uh, well, that's pretty obvious now. They have good lobbyists. You know, look at the price of sugar. Take a look at the price of sugar on the, on the world market uh, and compare it to the American price. The American price is 50% higher than the global price. So, you know, the, so back to our Greece thing. Uh, the European banks, the American banks are just going through typical rent-seeking behavior, which you know, the rest of us are too lazy or we've got, as Dick Cheney said, better things to do than worry about uh, this stuff. But they will pay whatever it takes to get lobbyists to finagle this and change it all towards their advantage. Rick, what do you think the, the, potential, uh, the potentiality of the other governments actually coming to the, to the bailout uh, scene for the banks? And, and uh, we should explain that for the people at home. The reason why they are seeking a bailout is because Greece has f uh, borrowed money that's floating a bond. They put their bonds out, and the banks come along and buy, uh, and, and buy these bonds. In other words, they give Greece money, and Greece gives them back the principal plus interest. Well, the problem of this giving this back their, their principal plus interest has come to a to a head here in this crisis where the potential 
of Greece not returning the money to the banks uh, has, uh, is coming due very quickly. And so uh, what do you, uh, Rick, what do you, uh, what do you view as the potentiality for uh, this actually occurring? And uh, I think you mentioned also uh, that the economy of Greece is uh, probably 2 to 3 percent the size of uh, the United States. Uh, was, that, was that correct? I think it's 2 or 3 percent the size of the whole European economy taken together in the Eurozone. Okay. That's what I heard. Okay. So there's a, there's, and so uh, it, it will probably have a certain percentage of the 2 to 3 percent effect on the economy, on Europe's economy, and thus, uh, and, and that could have a, a, a small effect on the U.S. So, with, uh, what do you, what do you, I have two questions for you. One, uh, what's the potentiality for this to occur? And, and with the size of, of uh, Greece being just 2 to 3 percent, what kind, what, what is the, what is the ultimate result on the U.S. economy, do you think? Well, I mean, Greece, I, I don't think U.S. bank exposure to Greece is all that high. It, it's nothing, it's very, it's much, much smaller than uh, it is directly vis-a-vis uh, -vis the European banks, uh, specifically the French banks and I suppose the German banks, uh, although I don't know the exact numbers, uh, and I'm not sure anybody uh, knows the exact numbers or that they're entirely transparent, but they're large, okay? Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't see the U.S. being at risk directly from a collapse of Greece. Uh, I do think that uh, instability in financial markets, because we are seeing, you know, the U.S. stock market react to news about Greece, uh, Grecian bonds, right? Uh, and that's that's pretty new. I can't think of any other time in history when uh, a country that small had an impact uh, on the U.S. stock market seemingly so directly. So in, in terms of how it affects investor sentiment, uh, there is an impact there. But, you know, I would argue that the fact that we have effectively zero interest rates it ensures that markets will remain volatile, including the U.S. stock market and most other world stock markets. And so, to me, that's not a fundamental factor. It's merely a contributing factor, if you see what I mean. When you have zero interest rates, you can't price anything, right? You can't do a discounted cash flow. And that's why, that's the principal reason that uh, many asset classes remain as volatile and will continue to remain as volatile as they do. Uh, as for the, the direct impact on the U.S. of a Greek default, I, I think it, it, would, it would knock financial assets uh, in, in terms of investor sentiment, uh, but at a fundamental level, would it slow down the U.S. economy? Would it disturb our trading patterns? Not much, not in my view. Okay. Well, Chris, Chris I'm, a, I'm a little bit less sanguine on the situation. While I agree that the Greek banks, uh, the American banks don't have a lot in the way of Greek debt, what they do have is counterparty risk with the European banks. And while Greece is, in fact, you know, only the size of Rhode Island in terms, in terms of its uh, GDP, when you look at a European bank or any commercial bank for that matter that's levered, you know, 10 to 15 times, uh, has taken its equity base and levered it up 10 to 15 times in its asset base and they've got Greek bonds on their balance sheet. When those Greek bonds go bad, it starts to eat into the equity and these banks start to have big problems, if not outright collapse, which again, is not a problem for the US, except it's a problem for US banks who deal with these banks. And so when that starts to flow back here, then the panic sets off. And when the panic happens, then we're all just running around with our hair on fire and no one has any idea what's gonna happen. It's like when you start a war, everything looks great. We're actually a better example. Every watch, every NFL game, every high school football game, every college football game, coach goes running out and every, every before every game he's got his piece of paper, there's the first 10 plays they're gonna run. They run the first play off his little sheet 
and then he just scraps the paper because the game has now begun and it's a totally different beast. So the U.S. banks will, you know, pull back, stop dealing with European banks, and that's when global economic activity really takes a hit, and and then and then the panic sets in. Well, and then your gold your gold thing starts to really play. You know, Mark, I uh, I tend to agree with that that scenario. I think the impact is uh, is 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 mar is larger than 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 just a two percent or three percent influence on the European market, and and its flu influence on our market being a, a portion of that. Uh, I, I tend to look at your scenario because of the leverage uh, factor that's, uh, that's involved here. And uh, perhaps we could hark back here and, uh, uh, and look at the article in the Wall Street Journal last week uh, by Edward uh, Lazier. Um, he uh, wrote the, uh, the European Crisis, Doubting the Domino Effect, and he mentioned, he mentioned in that article um, about how about the influence of the uh, of the uh, mortgage market on on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac itself, which guaranteed much of it. Uh, Lehman failed. Merrill Lynch had to be taken over. Washington Mutual, uh, Wachovia, um, and uh, and and many others. And the uh, and the influence on the market was astounding. Albeit that the uh, recession had already started in its in its uh, from probably uh, a year before that, uh, but nevertheless, uh, the uh, the mortgage market, which is basically a, a bond, guaranteed at least partially guaranteed, or assumed to be guaranteed uh, by the government. Um, so we have a we have a, a similar situation. With Greece, and uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to ask you guys one more round of comments on this uh, pursuant or or liking this to the to our situation uh, from a couple of years ago. Uh, Rick, do you have any comments on this? Seeing the parallel, is there a, is there a parallel to be uh, uh, to be ascertained uh, here? Well, um, of course, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have a combined balance sheet of about five trillion dollars, so they're very big beasts, and they had by far the largest share of the mortgage-backed securities market in terms of, of, of issuance. Um, I mean, the, the role of government in in fomenting this crisis is course, parallel. Um, I, I don't th think Greece, incidentally, I don't think Greece is going to default, by the way. I, I, I do think there's enough uh, financial firepower that's been at least advertised. I guess it's approaching, if not exceeding, a trillion dollars now in potential firepower that the Europeans have put together. And, you know, I guess the Chinese are maybe in the background and the Japanese even possibly could support their effort. Uh, which seems like a fair amount of money to bring to bear on, on the Grecian problem. I, I think what's really uh, um, behind all the worry about quote unquote Greece is this uh, um, domino effect that you're referring to, namely Italy and Spain and so forth, because those really are large economies, much larger than Greece's is, right? Uh, even Spain is significantly bigger. Uh, so I think that's what's really at work here in terms of the fears, uh, especially that the European banks are feeling, but uh, potentially uh, U.S. banks in, in terms of their counterparty exposure. But having said that, it appears to me that the Europeans are perhaps slowly, uh, perhaps haltingly, uh, coming to grips with the size of the, the, the dollar volume or euro do volume of, of firepower they need to uh, attack this issue. So you'll think the, uh, the governments, uh, specific, and specifically Germany, will come to the ultimate rescue? 
Well, that seems to be the latest news. Okay. Mark, uh, do you think uh, likewise on that? You know, Chris, the only time I ever get to take uh, victory laps in life is when terrible things happen because I walk around looking for the problems in the world. Uh, like H.L. Mencken's definition of a pessimist is somebody who, when he smells roses, looks around for a funeral procession. I'm that guy. And I can understand why they started NATO. I understand the rationale. You know, the joke was to keep the Germans down, the Americans in, and the Russians out. Why they started this, uh, you know, I I've been a Euroskeptic since day one, and it's just moronic. And if you didn't learn your lesson from watching World War I, when the Marxists called it the capitalist war and said that the proletariat across borders would lay down their arms because they, they were brothers in arms and they weren't going to fight. You know, a French worker was not going to fight a German worker. Well, you know what? Once the bullets started flying, a French worker was a Frenchman and a German worker was a German, and they hated each other. And to sit here and think that, you know, Germans are going to keep paying this and it's all, we're all going to have a big group hug and a bunch of uh, satraps in Belgium are going to run this thing dispassionately without the rent seekers taking complete advantage of them is just, you know, you've got to be smoking crack to believe that crap. So this thing was flawed from the beginning. You know, I get to take my victory lap now, now that it's collapsing. And the sooner it dies and the sooner that the whole Euro Union breaks up, the better off we'll all be. I, I would say take our pain now, let Greece go under, let it filter through the banks so but, that we can all get on with life. But it's not it's, our choice. It's 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 their choice whether they're going to let it go or right. not. That's right. That's right. And there's a significant Euroskeptic community in Europe, uh, but they get shouted down by the media. And they've been considered, you know, they're the only thing, the only thing worse than these guys, you know, from from the start was kind of the neo-Nazi party. So it's, it's you know, in, until we grow up and act like adults and realize that, you know, Portuguese people are culturally, linguistically, and historically different from uh, Frenchmen, we're, we're going to keep going through the charade until it becomes a really big problem. It's like in the U.S. where we're, we're in, instead of letting the, house, the, the excess housing we have right now, let that market clear, we're doing everything to keep those housing values inflated above their true value. And then we're doing the same crap with the euro by, by uh, you know, structuring these deals with the IMF and the World Bank and whoever else is going to get involved to help Greece balance its books. Okay. Well, guys, I think that's it for today. And uh, I want to thank our panelists, Mark Brennan and Rick Samuelson, for joining us. And uh, we're going to hear from them in the future. And I want to thank our audience for joining us at the Philosophical Angle. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.